This is the PowerColor RX5700 XT. If you look at the fan shroud, there's actually three screws that are holding the fan in, but it's also connected to a beam that's holding in the GPU shroud on both sides. You unscrew D6 beneath the fans and you should be able to remove the fans itself. Now to tear down into this GPU, it's very simple. I already have it tore down, but there's really six screws, four for the GPU and then two more on the top and bottom, six total to remove the heat sink from the PCB. Now what I've done is I cleaned up everything. I removed not only the thermal paste, but the thermal pads as well. And I cleaned up the PCB with a toothbrush to make sure there was no dust. I saved the thermal pads and I used alcohol everywhere. Now you don't see any captain tape, but I already applied nail polish around the SMDs or on the PCB around the memory modules. If you look very carefully, it almost looks like memory goo or grease that usually it gets applied from memory thermal pads so i don't see any issues that you might have if you have to rma a gpu or anything like that and captain tape you can remove uh, when you want to whereas nail polish you can't however again you could barely see it you saw, see it shining a little bit but that's it now i'm going to get ready to put everything together the thermal pad originally on this power color model was one millimeter while the th copper shim is 0.8 millimeter so I need to use thermal paste, 0.8 copper shims, thermal paste again, and then put everything back together. But instead of using the stock shroud, I will be using the 120 mil fans from the Arctic P12s. So before I continue and put everything together, I took the fan shroud off and I actually lied. There's four screws on the side. You don't have to take off the fans, but there's four screws on each side of the heat sink that allows you to just remove the shroud and the fans together. Uh, there's the thermal paste on both the copper shims and the GPU die. To really get this into position, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this to the side and then flip this over and carefully lay it down rather than do it this way because if those copper shims fall off for whatever reason, that could be a pain. Uh, but you just gotta make sure your alignment's good. It doesn't have to be super perfect. The biggest thing I want you to take note of is depending on the GPU model, if your copper shim is hanging over a little bit, and most of them will, especially if you're using 15 millimeter don't get the 20s get the 15 for the gpu memory modules but you can see how close the copper shim is to the smd if that was hanging over a little bit that smd will be crushed or direct contact on the back side of the copper shim so i made sure to space out everything to where these little smds are not making direct contact there's an actual little gap in between every single one so just be mindful of that now it's just a matter of getting it together putting the fans on using a splitter and seeing the results jank af but it will work so it's been a few days now and i've been testing off and on making sure that everything is running everything is stable on my rig now you're gonna have to pick and choose your battles because as a gamer who is more reliant upon core performance core thermals you know increasing the overall thermals of your core can have a negative effect bringing down your gaming performance or whatever workload you're on. If we switch over to the main screen, you will see focusing on GPU 7, which is the power color card that we modded, the memory temperatures are quite down drastically compared to its brother, which is the exact same model that's sitting around 100C right now. The core is at 71, but the core on the card that I modded is at 77 degrees Celsius. That's very high. And the reason that is, and you gotta take this into account, it really depends on the cooler or the heat sink of your GPU. The power color GPU or, or heat sink is very small. And so we're, we're absorbing that extra memory heat into the, the heat sink, but now we're also impacting the GPU core thermals, increasing that. So for a gaming perspective, this mod wouldn't be uh, as advantageous. However, for my situation, making the system more stable 24 seven and bringing down the memory temps, it is beneficial for me. So you're gonna have to pick and choose the data that you get from various content creators. I just wanted to share this with you. If I do the copper shim mod on a different GPU with a bigger heat sink, it may be uh, a better performance because there's more surface area for that heat to be dissipated in uh, and so on and so forth. If we actually look at the original here, again, focusing on GPU seven, 
which is the second to last one, you know, we did drop the memory temps quite significantly, but we increased the core temps by almost five, six C, depending on how much hotter it gets here. Now the XFX stick, I did do some mods to. What I did is I replaced the stock thermal paste with the G-Lid thermal, uh, no, excuse me, thermal pads with the G-Lid thermal pads. And you can see it's 94 C on the, on the MEM, 69 on the core, whereas originally it was 76 on the core and 102 on the MEM. Now, both are stable. You can see the system has not restarted. The gigabyte card is actually my problem child now, causing the system to restart. So I did make the system more stable 24 seven, even in a hot environment, and I did reduce the memory temperatures. However, again, pick and choose your battle. Or you want it to sacrifice a little bit of heat on the core, um, or you know, do you want to just focus on keeping that core cool and just keeping the mem somewhat stable? Remember, try to keep it below 94C. Uh, you should not be running above 94C, 24-7, 365, but you're going to have to pick and choose depending, again, on your the heat sink design of the manufacturer, how much surface area you have, how much heat you can actually dissipate with a proper airflow, so on and so forth. But that's going to do it for this particular video. We'll take a look at some of the other GPUs. Do me a favor on the way out. Hit the like button. Don't forget to get subscribed. Hit the notification bell to stay up to date, as well as check out links in the description uh, where I will feature some of the parts used in this video, as well as other items to help support the channel. You all have yourself a wonderful day. Take care. I'll catch you next one.